But here on the stage today, we have a short but action-packed session for you this morning. We're running right up until one o'clock. Uh, in just a minute, I'll introduce our first brand challenge. Then after that, we've got the first innov uh, our innovation exchange for today. And then we're going to be hearing from Twitch and looking at uh, best practice when it comes to in brands engaging on Twitch. So loads going on today. Uh, but to just introduce myself, my name's Jeremy Bassett. I'm CEO of CoCubed, and we're really proud to be partnering with MadFest on the House of Innovation. Uh, if it's your first day here at MadFest, uh, grab your app. There's lots of ways to engage on there. You can connect with participants. You can see the agenda. You can also get involved in asking questions um, as well. So jump onto the app. Uh, at 1 o'clock, today is sort of like a, fun, a very fun day at MadFest. Every day is a fun day, but today particularly so. We've got the carnival happening at 1 o'clock. So there's uh, not only an amazing DJ, but also the chance to win two business class flights to a carnival of your choice anywhere in the world. So uh, do stick around for that. That should be um, a, fun, a fun afternoon as well. So just to introduce what's happening in this session and, and what we do as CoCubed. We work with the world's largest corporates to introduce them to the world's most innovative startups. And we track and monitor over 12 million, million, 12 million startups, uh, 35 of whom are here today. Um, so if you're interested in this space of innovation and thinking about how can your brand connect in the startup ecosystem more, then we'd love to have that conversation with you. Uh, and you can talk to any of the guys in the lab coats over there. Uh, here in the house, I, I would like to encourage you to do one thing um, sometime this morning or this afternoon, and that's jump into one of our speed dating sessions, if you haven't already done that. Great opportunity to meet a handful of companies. Basically, you meet five companies in 30 minutes. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's absolutely no pressure to move anything forward, but it's a great opportunity to see where the industry is going and explore how you might be able to partner with the startups. So let's kick on with our brand, our brand challenge for today. And our brand challenge comes to us from Eon. So please give it up to Scott. So Scott, talk us through Eon and your role at Eon before we jump into the actual challenge. Yeah, of course. So thanks you know, to, to you for having us along. Thanks for coming inside as well, although it's not really hot. It's still sunny outside, so appreciate you all coming inside. So yeah, as mentioned, so I'm Scott. I look after, or try to look after the sort of marketing efforts that we have in the UK. So that covers owned, earned, and paid side of things. So uh, me and my team, um, who do obviously the real work, not me, we try and sit and pull things together. And ultimately, the story we've got at Eon, I joined just over a decade ago now. And at that point, obviously, we had our customer business, but it was all about big, uh, big power stations and fossil fuel power stations. And the change we've had since then is the growth of renewables, so wind farms. And then we're entering kind of almost a third age of energy at the moment, which is very much around uh, what we talk about, decentralized uh, generation, decentralized energy, ultimately solar panels, batteries, electric vehicle charging, and that change where we're all going to have energy solutions in our house. So that's the challenge we've got as a brand at the moment. How do we shift our consumers, our customers' thoughts from you know, the provision of electricity and gas, still really important, particularly so at the minute around cost of living. But how do we change that? And the only way we can get away from more expensive fossil fuels imported from abroad is for more of us to put solar panels on our house to make use of batteries and cars. So that's what we'll talk a little bit about today. That's the challenge we've set some really exciting companies and looking forward to hearing all about it. Awesome. So you've got, obviously, you made a big investment in sustainability. You're looking to move consumers into that space. What are you looking for in today's startups? Yeah, so f f the challenge we've set today is very much how can we help us as a business, but also you know, consumers, customers in general, how can we move from all talking a good game on climate crisis, taking action against it, to actually doing something about it? You know, our, our boss, uh, uh, Eon, talks a lot about the fact that the science hasn't changed in 30 or 40 years. The only thing that's changed is how little time we now have left to do stuff about it. And almost that inaction that we're all guilty of, you know, me certainly and, and most people, we all try and do a little bit, but how can we help people actually make those changes? Because I think the great thing about sustainability now is those changes you can make, they're actually for the better. So you might change because of the climate crisis, but actually the positive impact you'll have is about air pollution. So you, know, you might want to you know, do it to help the planet, but you'll save a few quid doing it as well. You might improve your health. So it's those action points we want to get across to consumers. So that's what we're looking forward to hearing about today. 
through our media, how can we get consumers to action rather than just talking a good game? Okay, brilliant. Well, uh, Scott set the challenge. Eon's put 20K on the line to pilot an innovative solution from today's pitches. We've got six companies lined up. The way this is going to work is each of the six companies will come up, do a three-minute pitch, and then we've got time for one or two quick questions after that from Scott. Uh, so let's get this show on the road. And obviously, part of the move of helping consumers make this switch into sustainable uh, energy comes from the way we market. And a company doing an amazing job of uh, creating a marketplace for the open web is, uh, is oh my goodness, I'm stuttering here, is a picnic. From picnic, we've got Saint. Saint. Hi Scott, Hello. I'm Saint from Picnic and I'm here today to tell you how Picnic is going to power Eon conversations with social display. But first of all, a recap on the brief. Just to summarize, um, the brief is about enabling dialogue around adopting renewable products and to support Eon with ethical marketing opportunities. At Picnic, we can do both things via social display. A little bit about social display and what Picnic is. We're the social display marketplace. We bring the high quality ad experiences of social media to the open mobile web. We have six mobile formats, but I'm going to take you through one which we believe answers the brief. Introducing Messenger. Come on, video. Um, should load. Messenger um, is, is a format that drives conversation with the user, it enables dialogue. It basically um, is a two way conversation with the user. We can use text should load. We can use text, um, we can use video, we can use display, and it can be fully customized. What's more, it's seeing unrivaled uh, dwell time of around 25 seconds and a 0.5% engagement rate. So a really, really strong format to help you deliver your communication messages. But the key thing is, and this is a key USP for Picnic, you know, 52% of users say a bad mobile experience will make them less likely to engage with the brand. Fear not with Picnic. We have user-first inventory. So basically, what, what Ian will be getting with our UX is completely brand-safe environment, no overly intrusive pop-ups, and, and a really, really fast loading speed on, on, on mobile web pages. Furthermore, Eon will be in, an, in a trusted environment with publishers. So these are our publishers, so you know that we serve our formats mid-article in premium publisher or quality journalism supply. So you'll be in a trusted and engaging environment to deliver your communication messages. But, and finally and most importantly, we've gone all in with scope three. So at no extra cost uh, to, to Eon, we will be able to compensate the carbon footprint of your campaigns at no extra cost. So, and, and we do this via scope three through things like reforestation, direct air capture, biochar, and carbon source store, storage. So to really to, to fulfill your sustainability credentials. And finally, we'd love you to come on board and work with the wealth of brands that we're already working with across all verticals from EE to eCover. So to summarize, this is how Picnic will deliver for Eon. We'll drive conversation on renewable solutions with our messenger format, shame the video didn't play, and ensure seamless delivery and ensure that all of your cam campaigns are carbon compensated and 100% carbon neutral. Thank you. That's great, thanks so much. In terms of uh, some of the um, offsetting and so on, how do you track and trace the quality of that. So you talked about reforestation, for example. How do you validate that those schemes that you've then to offset the carbon, how do you make sure that those are followed through on? That's fully measured via scope. So you, you, you would get a full PCA report on the back of that, be it through reforestation or biochar. So it's all reported back to you uh, via scope and then therefore via us as well. So it's a complete post-campaign analysis report. That's great. And in terms of the dialogue, 
how, I guess, how deep does it go? You've got an example on screen there of a, almost a yes, no. Yeah. What then happens on the stages behind? How long do you keep, I guess, the consumer interacting with before they get passed on? Well, we see an average dwell time of around 25 seconds. So we, what we will do is we will work with you to, to kind of build out the questioning tree. So obviously make it completely relevant to, to, to the creative. Then we build it out. And really, I mean, you know, you, it's kind of how long do you want to go? We will do the decision in questioning tree with you to make sure that the questions are answered. But like I said, 25 seconds dwell time. So it's, it's kind of a really sticky format. Great. And then final question, I guess, is what's been the biggest success you've had? There's some really great brands you've clearly worked with that you've wowed so far. What's been the one bit, you know, what's been the one real success that you'd hang your hat on to say that was the project, that was the thing that really summed up that, you know, this is what we're all about? A picnic in general? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, this, this again is how our partnership could evolve. Um, we work with BritBox, for instance, in the entertainment space. We built a format f with them, so our swipe right format, which is a fun, engaging format. So that's kind of where this can go, and it's an award-winning format. So we would see very much this as the start of a, a very much a mutual partnership to, to help you fulfil your, your your KPIs. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Strong start there from Picnic. So. Yeah. We are going to move from interactive display ads to the world of augmented reality. Uh, from rock, paper, reality, here's Joseph. Hi, hello, hello everybody. Um, thanks for honoring me with your presence. Hi, Scott. Um, so yeah, rock, paper, reality. We are a dual business, part consulting, part studio development. So really hyper-focused in immersive technologies, helping brands across marketing and advertising. Um, so we've expert practitioners in 3D modeling, storytelling, service design, and we've been in this space since 2010, so kind of we've predated Google Glass and, you know, any other headset you can think of. Um, so we really helped, you know, both technology providers, solution providers at the top of the chain, all the way down to startups, really integrating a AR into their strategy and, uh, you know, helping them to drive awareness, uh, engagement and conversion to drive revenue growth. So the kind of thread that, have, that these brands have in common is the adoption of what we call Web AR. So Web AR up to now has needs as an app that kind of has been that hampered experience of the user. But now we have the Web AR technology that is browser-based. The branded content sits on the URL that can be accessed through a mobile phone. So it's pretty much accessible to anybody with a mobile phone and an internet connection. Um, so really kind of has three steps. There's a attract, you know, how do we get somebody to the experience? We deliver the experience to the person through a QR code that would activate the experience. There's a interact, what will the consumer be doing in, the, in that experience? They'll be engaging with content, namely a virtual portal. It could be a branded environment, uh, ambassadors, spokespeople, 3D models of what we're trying to explain. Uh, and then finally, an act is kind of, you know, what's that next step in the funnel that we want them to get to? So the, the neuroscience clearly, clearly establishes that um, you know, AR is far more uh, impactful on the brain of the user. So it just really dries up the levels of uh, vis visual attention. Also, you know, in terms of eliciting surprise in the brain of the, of the customer, and also helping with brands uh, retention, memory recall. So that is just to show the, you know, how that brain activity differs from a 2D flat experience to an AR uh, content. Um, Omnichannel, once you, you build that experience, you can deploy it across all those touch points. So whether it's through the website, email, uh, you know, how you're reaching your customers, text message, uh, you know, printed um, you know, correspondence, that is kind of where you can deploy that QR code or hyperlink. Um, so how this would work for, for you. So, what we think is there's a real good opportunity to use um, virtual portals. Oops. Oh. Virtual portals. So essentially, a virtual portal is a digital uh, representation of an environment. So we could take the representation of a typical home setting of a customer. 
Uh, we can you know, add all the typical appliances that they would have. And then we can add those information hotspots to activate those appliances. And then we can add, you know, sort of gamify components so the person can interact with those models. They can see what's the impact of the, the burn usage of the kettle. And then we can sort of challenge them to complete different tasks and sort of see, you know, how that uh, impact is on, on their usage and really just drive them from, um, you know, inspiration to meaningful uh, reality uh, given the periods of, you know, turmoil in the energy sector. Thank you. Yeah, thanks a lot for that. It's really interesting. And you can see there's really strong results when customers do interact. What's been, I suppose, the increase of people prepared to use AR on their phones in, in scenarios? I guess in the same way that, uh, you know, QR codes the last couple of years because of the pandemic have taken off. But are you seeing more and more people comfortable, I guess, stepping into an AR environment? Yes, no, totally. So the QR code now is kind of ingrained in the people's, you know, sort of mindset. They know what they need to do. That's a call to action to initiate the experience. So, you know, once you build that experience, you can sort of meet the customer wherever they are. So you can make that QR code accessible. So the adoption has been, you know, very high amongst users. Um, and also just, you know, in terms of creating that content that will create a fun, memorable, informative experience. And I think like lots of big companies, sometimes we can uh, find internal processes a little bit challenging. Mm. We want to be a bit quicker. In terms of the sort of build time you know, for, for a campaign across there, is it a long process complex? How easy is it you know, to kind of, I guess, for us to take a leap into this world? Yeah, it's kind of just co-creating, co-developing with you, understanding what the objectives, the requirements, the outcomes, and we can get a proof of concept up and running in three months. And similar question as I asked last time, what's, if there was one project that you're particularly proud of you know, around uh, you know, the work so far, which one would it be? Yeah, we've got a few social impact projects for American Heart Association, Alzheimer's Research. So it's kind of using this type of sto emotional storytelling to create that emotional bonds, um, inform the consumer, and also drive them to help fundraising. Brilliant. Thank you. That's great. Thank you. Thanks. Well done, Joseph. So, obviously, moving consumers to sustainable energy requires a huge amount of re-education and behavior change. Uh, and that requires a lot of attention. Well, our next company is looking at a fraud-free marketplace for attention. From Attention Exchange, here's Gillum. Thanks very much. Hello, Scott. Uh, my name's Guillaume, I'm the founder and CEO of the Attention Exchange. <clears throat> Never has it been more important for brands and consumers to engage in an active dialogue around the impact of climate change. The problem with conversation, of course, is that it takes two to converse. And to your point, Scott, there's been an awful lot of blah blah going on between brands and the impact they're having on climate change, but never is, are you in a better position as an energy provider to actually make an impact. You actually have literally the power to make a difference. But in a world of the internet where we are bombarded with content, an infinite amount of content, how do you bring the other half of your conversation into the room? Very difficult. So we've built a new room. Publishers connected to our attention exchange have basically what we're calling a private cinema room where the audience engages by sharing their banking transactions with us. They do so to hear from brands relevant to their spending, not their browsing. Why would they do that? Well, the brands pay them for access to their attention in this private cinema away from all the dangers and fraud and everything else of the internet. If you think it's weird to pay people for their attention, I think it's weirder, weirder to pay big tech to stalk them all over the web and host all sorts of other very divisive, fraudulent, fake content out there. So it's a private cinema room and they get paid in cash into the bank account that they've connected to us. What that means is we don't rely on all the other kind of content to host that uh, discussion. And it means that we're able to hold a 97% video completion rate and a 19.6% click-through rate. Where do you send them is up to you. But we decided to engage with our audience and tell them that today we're pitching to a large energy provider. How would they want to be engaged with by an energy provider? And here's an example. We use a product called Tolstoy here. But it could be an AR experience. It could be anywhere you want to send them. And funnily enough, we found that just under half of them actually want to engage in a conversation with you. They want to talk. Right? Uh, they want to talk with your experts, you know, your change makers. Um, actually, speak with them. 22%, uh, we sent that to 1,000 of our audience, 22% replied. They replied through audio. No one did a video, unfortunately, but they replied also through text. 
And these are just some of the answers that I came up with in terms of engaging ideas, how you can interact with them. Um, and I'm pleased to say that we have a ton more responses that I'll share with you after this. The average time they spent engaging with you, well, me in this instance, was 1 minute 44 seconds. I was actually blown away by some of the responses. A really engaged audience. <clears throat> in terms of the project that we're most uh, pleased with, we're a very early stage startup. We come from FinTech, so we're emerging into ad tech. But Elliot Footwear, who do carbon negative sneakers, uh, did a campaign with us that actually got a 54% click through rate. Uh, and actually, we then did an independent study with Norris Media, who validated that our campaign was 422% more carbon efficient per click than Facebook, which means that we then were able to offset more than the difference. So it's actually carbon negative rather than carbon net carbon. Uh, one more thing, of course, because we're connected to their bank account, if they were to then start moving their energy supplier from Eon, uh, from someone else to Eon, we'd see that. They were fresh consent every 90 days. So it's completely consent driven and it's immutable. It's their bank account. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. See, it's a, a, an awful lot to think over there. In terms of, I suppose, the successes you've had so far, have you found that with your users, they prefer limited, I suppose, campaigns? So is it sort of one off interactions? Have you found that actually over time, sort of repeat interactions, brands repeatedly using the platform, which one works better? Is it the novelty of something fresh and new, or is it that ongoing conversation? That's a great question. So uh, Elliot Footwear actually have done five campaigns with us, um, but what we're seeing in terms of engagement is that rather than, as I mentioned, sort of trying to interrupt someone where they already are, they're coming specifically to hear from the brand because they're being fairly rewarded and it's relevant to their spending. So. Uh, I guess to answer your question slightly differently, about 73% of people who receive a notification from that a brand wants their time come into a, a publisher, in this case, an app called Zedosh, uh, to engage and hear from the brand. And the average CTR is actually going up rather than down the longer we're going forward. Um, yeah, thank you. And, and if I put it as I get the principle, but just to ask, how do you stay on the right side of making it fair? So in terms of, you know, you're, you're obviously compensating for time and engagement and so on. But how do you make sure, I guess, reputationally, positionally, that doesn't tip over into a bribe? Sure. Really great question. So the first thing is that, obviously, it's a $400 billion industry. And Google and Facebook are the predominant recipients of that. So the fairness, I think, comes into the fact that we know they're implicitly sharing their transaction data, income and outgoing, to hear from brands that are relevant. Um, and so we pay them a, a small fee in exchange for that, but we're not really, they're not incentivized to take action. It's just for attention. So the click-through rate isn't incentivized. Anything beyond that isn't incentivized. So, I mean, I guess, is cashback a not dissimilar model of saying, well, actually, if you buy the thing, we'll pay you money. <laughs> um, it's a very different way. Yeah. And for the record, yeah, there's an honesty to it as well, which, yeah. you know, is there, so it's good. And then spot a theme. What's the sort of one project, what's the thing that, you know, so far that you've achieved that's, that, that's I guess, the, the poster line that you, that you talk about? What's the best project you've had to date? Yeah, so I would say it's the Yellow Footwear one. Um, as I said, we've done five campaigns with us. I don't know if Sam's in the room, actually. He's the founder of, uh, he's not. He said he would be, uh, of Elliott Footwear. But uh, they've done five campaigns. We've driven a massive amounts of traffic to them and sold quite a few shoes <laughs> as well. So it's been a good outcome. And just at that point, you know, we were able to target Vasia customers who have Vasia transactions to say, hey, there's this amazing brand and the video is like one minute 57 long. Where would you get that in anywhere else? Thank you, Thank you very much. That's three down. We've got three to go. And uh, obviously, a huge amount of our attention is now being diverted into gaming. And a company that's helping brands show up in game and give a great in game experience is Bidstack from Bidstack. Please welcome John. OK, hello. Three minutes. Here we go. OK, so yes. So I'm here from Bidstack. My name is John Kennedy. I'm the, the partnership manager there. Uh, but what did Bidstack do? Bidstack are the leading, leading in-game advertising partner. Bit of a video here to show off some of our technology because it does look very cool. Essentially, what we do is give brands access and help them to uh, enter the actual real world, real world gaming environment. Okay. Uh, the way that's done is we can take um, 
live programmatically, we take your real two-dimensional game assets and we render them into the real world game environment instantly. So that's all the textures, all the, the shading and all the signs. It allows you to see that your two-dimensional asset is an actual gameplay. What's very important to us is credibility. So the gaming audience is uh, huge. With uh, three billion people playing worldwide, the, the industry itself is bigger than the combination of the movie industry and the music industry together. So the audience is there. It's, on this innovation stage, it's kind of difficult, but as a medium, gaming's already there. What we have is a new sort of technology to reach that audience. But is the audience relevant to Eon in this conversation? Oh yeah, luckily. Uh, we found the stats to prove it. So gamers and the environment are very intrinsically linked, with 53% of gamers believing that the environment is vital, 50% being in the market currently for an electric vehicle or hybrid car, and 46% would actively avoid brands with a poor environmental record. And that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. The gaming audience are very tech focused and very forward thinking. So the idea of looking for a hybrid car or the next solution to a problem makes sense. Not only that, but the gaming audience have a lot of purchasing power. As the audience ages up, they have more responsibilities, more things to pay for. For example, I do the electricity in my house now and I'm with Bulb currently, so I'm looking for offers. If you have any discounts, that's, that's great. Um, also, what we're gonna do to really truly launch it into gaming is to run across our full portfolio. So we've got a wide array of over 100 uh, different gaming publishers across all the brands you can see here. We want to put Eon in front of all of them, in front of in the actual gameplay. So there's no more credible place to be in the game, and no more, no more place where dwell time is led than in the actual gameplay. Putting Eon in front of gamers across football games, uh, racing games, shooting games, everything. And one important thing to flag there on the previous slide, which I've skipped through, is attention. So attention is talked about a lot, especially here in the last few weeks. Now there's no other way that you can drive more attention than in a gameplay. You can't second screen when if you look away from the first screen, you're going to crash the car. You're going to miss a shot or go, you're going to lose the game. There's no more high attention medium, and that's what we're going to do. The second one is we've already established an interest in electric cars with Eon, especially yourselves, and we're going to allow put players in the actual driving seat and allow them to engage with electric vehicles in the game. We launched back in December on a few of our racing titles, electric vehicles such as uh, Porsches, Jaguars, which already exist and allow players to play in those cars. We're going to brand them all up with Eon branding across the game not just allowing players to engage with Eon actively, but to seek them out within gameplay and approach the brand. Linking you to the huge uh, growth of electric cars in the last little while, but also kind of playing on that attention. And last of all, the big kind of idea. To drive the conversation, we're gonna create the UK's biggest conversation by running a 24-hour streamathon. Following the buildup of a month's placements in game and the launch of electric cars, we're gonna work with London United, the um, a London-based esports team with, who focused on social issues to run a Twitter first streamathon across a variety of viral games, fish out of water, broadcasting that across the UK to a huge gaming audience. And not only that, because I know you're going to ask, it's all going to be powered by solar panels outside of the studio. So that's how we're going to allow Eon to change the game and push the environmental conversation forward. Really good, thank you. And finally, nice to uh, have someone with a proper accent as well doing yeah, it, which always it. helps. Um, in terms of for a, a more traditional brand like us, clearly, the, and my team do a great job in trying to change that. We've got a bit, it's just, you know, it's obviously a slow challenge we have in changing the perception of the brand. Do you think across that gaming audience, that I guess that those gamers will give us permission to step into their world. It's not a natural place that you would find a big energy company back in the day. I get that that's why it's a good thing for us to maybe step there, but do you think we'll be met with any resistance? Yeah, that's a very good point. And to be fair, as like the gaming audience is quite resistant to obtuse branding or pushing it in your face. That's kind of what we specialize in, and that's kind of why I took the job, because reach them in a credible way is quite a delicate balance. Just putting an ad in front of someone in gameplay can be very frustrating. That's why in the actual gameplay, none of it's clickable, none of it takes you to an external site on the, some of the titles you've seen there. It's all about being part of that virtual world. And in a way, kind of, the majority of our games are sport-based, a lot of them are sport-based. And that makes sense because you're, you know, if you're playing Skyrim or some medieval title or something, it'd be weird to see an Eon brand on a shield, it looks stupid. Whereas like in a racing environment or a football environment, you're bombarded with logos all the time. So it makes sense for that to be a brand like Eon. Also, to be fair, um, you, in a way, are enhancing the player's experience. With a lot of players being, uh, games being free to play, they see it as Eon kind of helping that game maintain the free to play. And slightly linked to that, and I know you had a stat early on in, in the deck, but um, how do we make sure we stay on the right side of being positive about the change? Because obviously gaming can use an awful lot of power. It's right that we have a conversation about making sure that's renewable, et cetera, et cetera. But 
again, how do we stay on the right side of being positive about the energy intensity, I guess, of gaming without coming across as being too preachy? Yeah, sure. I mean, it is difficult, to be fair. I think when you compare gaming to other forms of media, like that we all need to work on our environmental credentials. That's fair across the board. I think a lot of these steps to be made more need to be made. But with the getting rid of the idea of plastic copies or physical copies of games, that's reduced that. But also, you got to think about the actual gameplay. People aren't turning on the console to see adverts. It's a behavior we're capitalizing on by pacing ads in there. So it's already something people are doing. So in terms of environmental impact, it's kind of uh, relatively negligible in a way. In terms of maintaining that positive side of the conversation, I think it's like being authentic. And you know, just like I say, not, it's a very difficult question to ask you think about it, because it's hard to explain how you're authentic and how you're credible. But I think that's what we specialize in and we'll work together on. Good. And then super quickly, um, what's the one thing you've done so far? What's you know, the sort of brand that you've put in a game? What's the bit you're most proud of so far? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's a really cool company to work for. And we've done loads of good campaigns in the past. I think the, the coolest one I can remember was for Paco Rabanne, won some awards. And it was a huge campaign across a variety of things. It was car wraps. It was a virtual reality game, which was played by one of the US soccer team, soccer team players. And there's also, there was, so if you remember, there's this Paco Rabanne ball you get at the moment, a little robot. They created that little robot in the game, and it was like your companion. It would come around with you in the game. And I thought that was a really cool way to integrate something that you wouldn't necessarily put perfume in a space game, but it made sense. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So from engaging through gaming through to engaging on videos, our next company helps brands to create content that is interactive and shoppable. From Scullium, here's Doreen. Thank you. So uh, at Scolium, we created a, a new technology that allows people to buy everything inside of video content. So for example, you are watching a, an advertising video of a solar, pa solar panel and you want to get involved uh, in the environment and gaining independence or your own consumption. Uh, you just have to touch your screen to purchase uh, the solar panel and that's it. Uh, maybe you are watching a video clip on, on, of Beyonce and she wears a great outfit, carbon neutral, and the same way you want to purchase it, you just have to touch your screen to, to purchase it. That's it. Um, another example, you are watching a series on, on Netflix, let's say Stranger Things, and you want to know more about the backstory. Uh, still, same process, you just touch your screen and you can, uh, you can have the book uh, and have it delivered at your home to, to read it. That, that's it. So for every uh, industry, uh, the process is quite similar. You just have to touch the screen and, uh, and that's all. Uh, so um, we created the technology of touch and our algorithm embeds more than 300,000 uh, brand partners uh, and more than uh, 500 millions of products. Uh, everywhere in the world, products and services. Uh, this revolutionary technology will be available on uh, October this year, 2022, uh, and it, uh, it's going to be worldwide. Uh, at Scoleum, we can do as well uh, your uh, digital marketing strategy inside Scoleum. Uh, we can create so video content, uh, manage the marketer's duty, I mean, uh, social media, uh, an advertisement campaign and etc. We can boost your image uh, based on your strategy and your values, and uh, yeah, we, we can collaborate for uh, from one to three years, and it's obviously renewable. Yeah, th thank you very much, everybody. So it's clearly a really impressive platform that you have in terms of being able to simplify things down. As a brand, how easy is it for us to change the content we have already or shoot new content to make sure it works with the platform? Yeah, actually, this is very easy. Uh, for any video content you, get, you have, it don't take more than five minutes to put it into Scolium. Uh, the, um, the thing behind is when the customer touch his screen, he gets a video explanation of what is the solar panel, for example. Uh, on, this, on the middle, he can purchase the solar panel, and on the right, there is a, a press article explaining more again about the, the products. Uh, 
Yeah, and uh, you can do your own uh, three uh, links. So you can choose which video you want to display when the customer clicks, which product uh, you want him to be redirected to, and you can choose what press article uh, you want him to see. Yeah. And as a marketing person whose job it is ultimately is to sell stuff, really excited, great. But I can already feel my legal and compliance uh, colleagues getting slightly nervous in the background. So whether it's financial regulations or in, indeed just make sure we're being really clear about the environmental claims of our products, as is the right thing to do, how do we make sure we stay on the right side of regulation that we're still being fair to consumers? Because we're selling quite complex products, be it solar panels or batteries. Yeah. How do we make sure we're clear with customers? Yeah, actually, uh, the content is your own video. So uh, you, can, you can put it uh, uh, above and uh, uh, explain it just uh, on television or just as you do on television on other social media. Uh, it's the same strategy, just uh, you ease your client's process and you get them involved into your vision of things. And we, we can help you to do that, uh, yeah. Good, and then same question as I've asked across, across the piece. What's, if there was one project that you're wanting to really shout about now, what's that one bit you've achieved? I know there's loads, but what's the one thing? Try and pick one. Yeah, actually, I, <laughs> I will not go further on this question, but yeah, we, we've got some great projects and great collaborations with uh, big brands in France already. So we are very proud of it, but yeah, we, everyone we will, uh, will know uh, in October. Good. Yeah. Thank you, that's great, thanks. All right, that's five down. We have one to go. And our next company uh, is turning every social media user into an influencer. From, uh, please give it up for Whisper. Thanks, Ollie. Hi, Scott. I'm Ollie. I'm one of the co-founders here at Whisper. And we're on a mission to democratize and decentralize advertising by turning consumers into influencers. So how exactly do we do that? Well, we connect brands and agencies to Gen Z and young consumers to their best and most engaging influencers, their friends and family. So it's no secret that it's become increasingly difficult to engage and inspire conversation within young consumers. Paid channels and traditional channels are unidimensional, and influencers have arisen to be the friendly face to communicate to consumers, but they're not without their shortcomings. They're undergoing an authenticity crisis. It's exemplified by the fact that influencers, on average, achieve just 2.4% engagement rate with their audiences now. And with a limited supply of influencers, there's really nowhere else to turn. Or is there? Introducing friendfluencing. At Whisper, we use the influence of the regular social media user to spread the word about brands and products on their personal accounts so they reach an audience of friends and family, not fans and followers, the people who love, care, and trust about our opinions the most. And the benefits are immediate. It produces 10 times the engagement rate of standard influencer marketing, and studies show that you're five times more likely to purchase or take action if your friend recommends something. Why use one influencer with 100,000 followers they barely know when you could use 100 regular people, each with 1,000 followers who they know, love, and trust? And the benefits of using so many more people is you produce 100 times more pieces of UGC, so the content and volume of advocation is much higher. And because we use multiple smaller individuals, we can offer a targeted direct alternative, both geographically and demographically. As you can see here, the different sizes of influencers in the market compared to friend influencers simply incomparable. Friends produce the best engagement. That's why we achieve, on average, 24% engagement rate across our campaigns. And how would we deploy that for Eon? Well, we could deploy hundreds of student friend influencers to share the benefits of renewable solutions to their socials. We could even position it with an upfront survey to engage thought, inspire engagement, and provide Eon insight into how young consumers feel about the different renewable energy sources, providing the most authentic form of feedback possible. We could demonstrate the social value and inspire action and dialogue through friends, and of course, Renewable solutions are for a communal good, and friend fluencing is an inherently communal channel. We're talking to our friends through our friends. And what's more, it's a circular economy. So each budget that Eon allocates to friend fluencing, a good portion of it goes directly back into the consumer's pocket, directly into their pocket, the people who are most likely to purchase back with Eon. 
by deploying them alongside for influencers with tactical uh, smaller nano influencers, we can create 360 brand immersive campaigns where you're being spoken to not just by the people speaking down to you, but the people around you as well. We've got advocation that from the biggest agencies in the world to allow us to connect with Gen Z and millennials. And we can really help build a habit that lasts a lifetime through friends to build a better future. Thank you so much, Scott. So it's always really difficult because it's, I guess, you want to sit here and think about, I can use words like democratizing content, and I'll say that for Eon, right? I want, you know, conversations that are happening. But then, you know, for the, make sure the other bit of my brain is going corporate alarm bells. Loads of user-generated content can be brilliant, but it can be really risky for us as well. So how do we put safeguards in place around our brand, both, as I sort of mentioned before, whether that's compliance or legally stuff, um, or whether that's you know, around quality. So how do we make sure that you know, what people are creating, although it's authentic, at the end of the day, we, our brand's really important to us. How do we make sure that we're protecting ourselves, I guess? Yeah, that's a really good question. It's something that we know is a, obviously a, a big concern for big brands like yourself. And what we really opt in is a, an, a user-elected method of advocation. So when we send the invite out through our technology, we are looking for the people who are opting in, advocating, and saying, hey, I, I or, or may already use Eon. I like Eon. I'm, I'm the, one of the advocates already. And I'd like to throw my hand to the ring to say I'd like to participate in this campaign and advocate for them. Upon that, it takes a secondary authentication system from the brand side, whether by they scroll through the, you know, the profile of each individual if wanted, and verify that they are true advocates for the brand as well. It's maybe a weird thing to brag about, but we have quite a high decline rate. Because what it really shows is that friend fluence is real people really don't want to advocate for the brands that they don't want to speak for and really do want to advocate for the brands that they want to speak for. Along with that, making sure that we give them very specific guidelines about what's suspected of them, making sure that they understand the content brief, and making sure that they're adhering to any brand guidelines that we set forth. And that is the key method of making sure that we're communicating with consumers to utilize their powerful influence and make sure that we're participating in a collective understanding of what Eon's brand truly is. <clears throat> Thank you. And you mentioned there about you know, making sure that people are genuine advocates for a brand. So I love a party, but I don't throw them because I'm always terrified no one will show up. How can we know that we'll definitely find a few advocates to back us on the platform? Have you had challenges in the past where you've brands that you may have wanted to work with you, but there just isn't that appetite in the community you've got to create you know, content in that authentic way for them? I think especially um, in your case with Eon, you know, uh, simply making them aware that there are so many like renewable innovations that you guys are pioneering really will inspire that like you know want to put your hand up and say I want to work with them you know of course most of our users are Gen Z young consumers early millennials and when it comes to ethical and especially ecological solutions they are honestly so eager to get the word out about them and advocate for it as well because you know as I'm sure you're aware they are you know, advocates for the environment, and they really want to make sure that they're getting the word out about it. So I think that, you know, when it comes to, you know, the topic of the day, it's all about conversation and making sure that when we are pitching this brief to our friend fluencers, that we're putting the best foot forward and making sure that they understand the impact that Eon are pioneering. But I think it would have a massive uptake within our community, and it would be met with a resounding advocation as well. Great. And then that final question that's become consistent, what's the one thing, you know, that you really would champion that's, you know, really shows what Whisper is all about? Yeah, so of course we've worked with you know quite a few multiple like ethical brands like um, the first uh, compostable coffee pod company where we really engaged within thought about uh, consumers' practices towards their coffee consumption habits and whether they recycled the coffee pods with one of those upfront surveys that we posted. And what we really found is that people were so eager to engage with that concept and start a dialogue with that like you know the upfront survey that the upfront prom uh, the promotion that followed was met with a massive uptake in both engagement and also dialogue as well. That's just one example, but I think another really interesting moment in our in our career so far is when we performed a campaign for Yo Sushi and we achieved a almost 50% engagement rate. That's, you know, 20 times that of, you know, the standard influencer engagement rate. And what that really demonstrates is that our friends, our family are the best conduits of advocation within the market. So we're really happy with that one as well. Thank you so much, Scott. Thank you, Ali. 
impressive results there from Whisper. So, say there we go, six of the best from the House of Innovation. What I'd love to do is just let's talk through all six of them, get your feedback, then we'll give you a minute to debrief with your colleagues, and then we'll get you to come back and announce the winner. So, we started the session looking at interactive display ads, and uh, Saint gave their solution from Picnic. What were your thoughts on Picnic? Yeah, so really interesting. Great to hear from it. I think. You know, and you touched on it, and it's, it's a really corporate thing, but thinking about scope three emissions, a really huge focus for us, because you know, it's true of all companies, but especially in the energy sector, we've got to be so mindful. We don't want to, obviously, indulge in greenwashing, but we've got to really make sure that we absolutely don't and all those claims. So the fact that you thought everything through right the way to the end of the chain in terms of those emissions was really powerful as well. And then the other pieces around quality publishers. So again, a bit of work that we're doing with our partners at Starcom and across the board is thinking, how can we, it's a, how can we almost come up with an ethical media policy in how we work, right? And that's a balance for all of us because we have our values as an organization, of course, you know, they're what we put forward, but we want to work with publishers, uh, with other um, partners who share those values in the same way, whilst, of course, balancing commercial needs and where our customers are. So, again, that safe environment is so important because we all, you know, everyone here knows much better than me about the challenges around, you know, different bidding technologies. So that cleanliness you had in the stack was super impressive and super good. And you clearly achieved some amazing results as well. So thank you. Perfect. And then we looked at the world of AR and rock, paper, reality gave their pitch. What yeah, so uh, listen, as I think we all are, and I think a couple of my questions, you know, that came through around it, where I guess it's that adoption of technology. And as we're all slightly guilty of working in marketing, sometimes we can be stuck in our own little bubble. Um, you know, and stuff we know to varying degrees, you know, it hasn't quite made it to quote unquote normal people yet, but you can definitely see it all over the place. And one of the questions or, or bits that really resonated with me with, you know, 13 year old daughter, you know, came into her the other day, sat with her phone and she was checking out for new trainers. I think it was on Adidas or Nike and through it. And it, she doesn't think twice about doing it that way and all the rest of it. So I can see that adoption and, you know, my own life coming through as well as it works. I think the applications for us are so, in a really complimentary way, are so bloody obvious. You know, where you're showing the home, it's about showing people, not just at the solar panel and battery end of the market, but a huge bit of the work we do is helping people at the lower, um, the lower end of the scale in terms of income. So government schemes to improve insulation and so on. But the obvious question that we all have for home improvement is, that's lovely, I get I'm gonna save money and get I'm gonna do a thing, but what's my house gonna look like at the end? And that's true for solar panels, right? Lots of us will go, get the point, I want them neat on my roof, I want to see. So being able to show customers before they take the plunge, you know, whatever the product is really powerful. And again, I think it's the simplicity you brought to it. You know, I'm by no means sort of technologically minded other than being able to work my phone, but I followed it, I get it. And it's that user case I think that's so powerful is what I took from it, so thanks. Brilliant. And then the third company was Attention Exchange. Thoughts on ex Attention Exchange? Yeah, so look, again, it was a slightly leading question that I asked around, you know, kind of, is it fair or not? I think it is that piece of more and more of us, more and more consumers are waking up, as we all know, we, I think we're all thinking a little bit twice at least of, do you tick that box around data and looking at it that way? And I think some of the strides Apple have made in terms of privacy, really flagging trackers and so on, it does feel that's the way not only the world is moving, but it feels that the way the world should move in terms of that much more equitable exchange of you're giving us time, that's worth something, you're giving us your information, that's worth something. So the honesty of the platform, I know it sounds a wee bit cheesy, but I absolutely love that, and I think it's really right. And again, I could sit here and from a brand perspective talk about what we're doing around climate crisis, what we're doing to make sure that issues around diversity in terms of race or sexuality we're pushing forward, but actually thinking about how we treat people's data, that sh fairness should come into it as well. So it's something, I've, to be honest, I've not thought about too much, but really captivated me and took me through there. And again, you can see that you know, some of the firms you're working with, some of those stories, really powerful um, as well there as well. So cool. it's great. Thank you. And then we looked at the world of gaming and Bidstack shared their pitch. Quick feedback on Bidstack. Yeah, so again, on, on Bidstack, it's one of those bits. Um, we, we do a little bit with a couple of esports companies and, and some electric racing in the real world, which has been a really interesting step for us because it's about, again, borrowing their equity with a really different audience. And it's one of the bits, again, from my own life, you know, kind of, you know, mainly playing FIFA, and, but being of a certain age, it's one of the challenges we have internally is to, I guess, as marketers, is to bring the outside world into the business. And in that really weird way that the Today program still talks about game launches as if it's some foreign thing, that us 40-year-olds are absolutely shelling out our money and paying money for it. It's not just a kid's thing. And you can see that in the game and some of the applications you've got already. So again, 
it's an area we've thought about working with. You know, we've talked to you know the great team at Starcom that we have, but it's that piece of like, how do we take that plunge? And again, the power as consistent across the board, but the simplicity of it and the way that you've really clearly thought not just about your product, your execution, but how you would help our brand with it as well. So really appreciative of that. So it was great. Thank you. Cool. And then the second last one was Scullium and the interactive video. Yeah. So again, the simplicity of it, you know, again, it's for the huge behemoth that Amazon is. You know, I think if, if we all think back, the reason that Amazon is what it is, you know, it's because they just made it so easy to buy a thing and do a thing. And over the years, there's been so many attempts, as you'll know way better than me, if I think back to when Gossip Girl was first on showing my age and media tastes, but when the CW launched and they tried to let you buy the outfits and all that kind of stuff. And I think what you've taken there is not just a concept, but you're executing it so easily, so simply. And I think again for us, raising people's awareness and then trying to take them what at the moment is still quite a long purchase funnel. There's a way I can think we can create interest and really captivate people because if you think about climate crisis, there's a logical, rational response that we all have as homeowners or as businesses, but actually there's a motive thing as well. So we saw a huge increase in people. It was the petrol crisis before Christmas when folks were you know, putting petrol in plastic bags. That's when we saw the real interest in electric vehicles. There's obviously an interest growing because of the climate, but it's those emotional shocks, you know, if you queues at petrol stations. How do we tap into that? So where you talked about news articles as well as adverts, that's a really interesting space for us, I think, to think about. Cool. And then we finished off with Whisper, looking at how we can engage influence or, or, or friend influencers. Thoughts on Whisper? Yeah, that's good. Sorry, that's just an age and Scottishness thing, that cough. It's not lateral flow test done and all the rest of it. I think you talked about it, Look, there's, there's that authenticity crisis around the media, you know, that happens. And I think, truthfully, the events, I mean, I don't know if anyone knows if Boris has gone yet or not. But again, that circus that we see around politics, right, it's just ebbing that trust away. And again, there's that real dichotomy, you know, between we all still look to the Guardian, the BBC, the Mail, whatever. But we do increasingly, and, and you obviously know way better than me, but we all know the amount of news you get, your friends are the editors now, not somebody sat in an office in Fleet Street or wherever. So again, tapping into that is, is huge. And again, a really useful and important bit, similar to, to a couple of the other people. I hate using the term brand safety, but it is such an important quality for us to think about the fact that you've thought about those additional elements, really brought it to life. And again, it's genuine engagement. That's the bit that really matters for us. If you think about the environment, you know, it's, it's in the brief, isn't it, right? We've talked about environment for a long time. We've changed our business, we've, you know, and all the rest of it. But there's so much noise, there's so many conversations, but it's ultimately you need folks to do something about it. And as we all know, it's your friends, it's your peers, it's your parents, it's your kids, whatever. Those are the ones that nudge you into action. So again, can absolutely see the, 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 you know, the challenges there. And I think across the boards, you know, I can see you know, the team, you know, in, in, including you know, the team members that look after the money for us. And I think that's the challenge for us here is going to be, you know, how do we just pick one? Because it's so impressive all the work that you've done as well. So I know I'm not supposed to, but if you can just give them a round of applause again, that was great. Brilliant. Well, great feedback there, Scott. We're going to give you literally a minute to decide the winner. Good. And then we'll be back to announce that in just a Good. second. While you do that, just let me tell you what's going on right after this. So uh, we've got two things happening here. Uh, one is uh, the Innovation Exchange. So this is an opportunity for a, a large corporate and a handful of startups to share their perspective on emerging technology. And Scott's going to be leading that session in just a minute. And then right after that, we've got um, another panel joining us to talk about Twitch and best practices around Twitch. After that, that takes us up to 1 o'clock. So at 1 o'clock, we've then got our lunch break, but the carnival is kicking off. And if you haven't heard, the carnival is the place to be in London today, um, maybe for this summer. Uh, we've got an uh, amazing lineup of, of DJs. Uh, we've got um, amazing food, drinks, all of that sort of stuff is taking place out there, as well as a massive uh, prize where two people will get the chance to fly business class to a festival of their choice anywhere in the world. Uh, a, a carnival of their choice anywhere in the world. Uh, and that's all sponsored by AppFlyer and Madfest. So do be part of that. But Scott, we're back. Yeah. And the winner is? And the winner is, but I have to say, and genuinely afterwards, uh, we will continue the conversation with all of you. I think there's something in there for all of us from it. But definitely, I'd say that the really great presentations, really excited. But the, t the team have spoken, and it's Bidstack that we'd love to work with. Bidstack. Wow. Woo!